A few weeks had passed and Thomas had been running the branch line like clockwork. But he had been trying desperately to think of names for his two coaches, and ones that would suit. He was pondering about it one morning while waiting for Henry. And what time do you call this, Henry? Hmm? Oh, if no pilot at Tidmouth, what do you think is going to happen? You could try and, hmm, I don't know, do some real work instead of being lazy and slack. <laughs> Thomas had begun to get frustrated with the bigger engines because they were taking so long, and he began to worry that he was letting the fat director down. His two coaches could tell that he was becoming very stressed, and he was constantly taking out his frustrations on the other engines, and occasionally the trucks. Some of the bigger engines were starting to get slightly annoyed with Thomas's attitude and knew that enough was enough. It's disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Despite missing him, it's apparently clear that Thomas needs bringing down a peg or two. He goes gallivanting off to work on his branch line and then suddenly bosses us around. Well, to some degree he has a right to be cross. Almost every train has been late these past couple of weeks. Not to mention those blasted trucks causing grief, here, there and everywhere. It's either we take an initiative, or we allow him to boss us around. Thomas has clearly forgotten how to speak to us, so it's about time we- <coughs> That's quite enough, Gordon. As it has been pointed out, Thomas has been running late because his connections with the majority of you haven't been arriving on time. So I'm now having to resort to rather unconventional means. Both Edward and James will be swapping around as pilots for the time being. Uh, yes, sir. And I've had the draft in Earl and Macy, while Frederick and Teddy are on good work until further notice to help Geoffrey. Oh, and Gordon, you can have a go on the local for a while. Gives the chance for one of the others to get the express a go. Me? On the local? But, sir! You will do as you are told. Besides, with your capabilities, surely you can give the passengers a good run. Oh, yes, sir. Right! I've been stuck in the yard for weeks already until I took your express. Now I'm going to be stuck here even more. You have problems. I've been relocated to slow trains. Trains that you can make up for with speed. Well, none of my jobs have changed, so I've got nothing to complain about. Shut, oh, shut up, up, Henry! Henry. <laughs> the fat director knew that this could cause a few problems, but I'm afraid to say that with the state of the yards having no shunter, it left a rather worrying position for him. He couldn't get one of the older engines from the other branch lines, otherwise that could cause a bit of grief for them. And with a lot of the pre and R engines being long gone, it left a rather large gap, and the last thing he wanted was there to be a power struggle. And despite there being the options of loan out engines, it was not a permanent solution, and that's what the fact director needed right now. Good morning, you two. It's the weekend now, so I expect that Ellsbridge is going to be busier once again. Oh, he's so cute and sweet when he's excited. Thomas had enjoyed the weekends on his branch, as it meant he could watch the fishermen and help the farmers. He had the occasions when sheep were crossing or straying onto the line, and would laugh endlessly when his crew, guard, and occasionally the passengers shooed them away. Although this weekend was different, as the weather was damp, the fishermen weren't out to Thomas's disappointment, but the farmers were. Thomas arrived at one of the halts where Michael McCall was waiting. Run, Waverer. We've had to not harvest my fields, but this is most of what I have. 
We'll make sure they get to Farco for tomorrow's market. As usual, Thomas would take the trucks to Natford and then pick them up later on a goods train that goes up the line. But today would be slightly different. He arrived at Natford and placed his trucks in the sidings where he usually would and was waiting for the signalman to set the points right when he saw Gordon arriving. <laughs> Morning, Fatface! What are you doing here? Hmm? I've been sidelined. The express has been taken over by mixed traffic. <sighs> simpletons. So, James and Henry are simpletons then, eh? Well... <laughs> yes! The express is for me today! <laughs> <laughs> Not the sort of thing I'd expect to see on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Thank God. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thomas cheerfully rushed down the line, but he was starting to worry. Sheds have already been slowed due to the weather. No need to cause any derailments. I know, I know. I, I'm sorry. Come on, it's time to go to the harbour. Sooner that's done, sooner we can get back on schedule. No, what happened? So he was new and didn't know that the cat belonged to Daryl. You know, that signalman there. So he didn't know the cat had common sense. But anyways, he dashed to the hut and then he just got a bucket and. <laughs> Stay on, Thomas! <coughs> you seem scorching! <coughs> Re really? So sorry, sorry. Uh, Fireman, uh, how's my pressure looking? It's higher than normal, and you've only just refilled. We'll take it steady and don't overdo it. By that afternoon, the weather had taken a turn for the worse. He had only just arrived at the harbour, but was surprised to see the amount of trucks that were there. Goodness me! What's all this about? There were ships bound for Dinmouth, but they had the dock here. But I can't shift all of this on my own. Can't someone else come and assist? I'm afraid I've already tried to, but there's no one available. Thomas grudgingly shunted his trucks together, worrying as he did so. It was only when he had to get the brake van that his fireman realised that he was running out of water. He quickly went to an old water tower and went for the brake van. It wasn't until after he got it that Thomas started to realise that the water wasn't sitting well with him. Right, no more messing around, or I'll be late with the farm stock. I'm afraid to say that when Thomas at last did leave, the weather had once again gotten worse.
got to Toru and went to the other end of the train, but felt dreadful. I need a drink, please. I feel so hot. I'm not sure it's warm, man. You dampened on your thigh, but nothing has changed. We'll have to look you over at Natford. But Thomas wouldn't exactly make it to Natford. He was just passing one of the cottages and was just in front of the bridge before the station limits when... I, I can't, I can't. I need to stop. Please, please stop. With his safety valves fit to burst, his driver shut off the regulator and applied the brake. He stopped with the rain pelting on his face just before the bridge. Thomas stayed there for a while until Edward soon came to rescue him and take him to the yards. Hey Thomas, you should consider yourself lucky. You could have lost your fusible plugs. But you've never used the watchtower at the harbour. In fact, no one has for months. What happened? I started to worry about being late with delivering the farm products to Farquhar. And I suppose I overworked myself, which... Which caused you to use more water. But why are you worrying about being late? You always enjoy taking the farm trains and have never been late once. Why today? I suppose it's because of the bigger engines being late recently. I've been worried about being late a lot more than I probably should have been lately. I thought that it would be taken away from me, you know? Is that so, Thomas? It appears you've been overthinking it a bit lately, but I can assure you that you won't lose your branch line. Furthermore, I think I should have a word with some certain engines. Thomas to have an incident like this. Taking on bad water? What sensible engine does that? I'll have you know this happened because Thomas was worried about being late. Because of you, lots. I have been paying attention to your times, and they have been abysmal. I've heard nothing but complaints from the passengers too. I better see some improvement. The bigger engine said nothing as the fat director turned on his heel and walked away. Annabelle, Clara, you two aren't normally here. Father is at Norumby at the moment, so we finished moving everything. Just then, the guard blew his whistle, and the two scurried to the coaches. <laughs> well, I hope they'll be alright. But it doesn't seem to be improving, though. Simmering has always been awkward for weather like this. Just means we have to be careful. But little did they know that these next few days would be quite eventful.